Hey, what's up there, DSL first? In this video, we're going to go over exactly how a basic car starting system works. I'm also going to show you how you can test your neutral safety switch, your ignition switch. We'll also show you how you can bypass those two components to help you get your car started in a bind. And I'll also show you how you can diagnose intermittent starting problems. Alrighty, so here's a look at a basic starting system which we have on this 1995 Toyota Camry here. And as you can see, we really have two different circuits that meet at the starter relay. Alright, so first we'll cover this side of the, your starting system. On this side, you have your battery. Obviously, your battery is grounded on the negative side. And on the positive side, your battery supplies a constant voltage, 12 volts, to your uh, starter motor and solar assembly. And this is constant. Doesn't matter if you got the key in the ignition, whether it's turned or not, doesn't matter. You always have 12 volts supplied to your starter by your battery. Next, there's a second wire that supplies 12 volts to the trigger post of your starter motor and solar assembly, and this is called the trigger or signal wire. But the 12 volt that goes from this wire to your starter motor and solar assembly can only pass through your starter relay on the switch side when you get the control side activated. And your starter motors and solar assembly is grounded through your engine. And here's a look at a starter outside the car and this is where your 12 volt constant battery supply goes. This right here is where your uh, trigger wire goes. And once you get 12 volts at this uh, trigger wire, 12 volt goes from here, travels from this wire to your uh, starter motor itself, which will turn this gear and this gear will turn the flywheel on your car and start your engine. And your starter motor is attached to your engine by these two bolts here and that's where it gets its ground. All right, next we're gonna cover this side. Now again, this is a pretty basic setup and this is what we have on this 1995 Toyota Camry. And But I'm gonna assume most uh, you know, older cars are gonna have a setup very similar to this. All right, so on this side, we're gonna start at your ignition switch. And when I say ignition switch, I'm not talking about this. This is your ignition lock cylinder. So the ignition switch is the electrical part that goes in the back of this, which is missing on this setup. All right, so when you first get in your car, put the key in the ignition and turn it to the first position. The first position is gonna be your accessory position. And uh, you always have 12 volts supplied to your ignition switch, by the way. And when you turn it, the key to the first position, to the accessory position, you'll have that 12 volts go through the accessory uh, wire to all your different accessories, therefore turning on your accessories. Next stop is going to be your on position. And once you turn it to that, you're going to have 12 volts going to your uh, different uh, control modules, your body control module, your uh, ECU or PCM, your SRS module. And after that, when you turn it to the start position, which is the last position or the cranking position, you get 12 volts going from this wire. So after you turn the key to the last position, or in other words, the start of the crank position, you get 12 volts coming out of the, its corresponding wire. Now, this is where there's, um, I'm gonna assume there's a variation of this. Like if you have an older car, but uh, your car has an alarm, this is where you might have a security or an al alarm relay. And the control circuit of this relay I'm going to take an educated guess, it's going to be controlled by your, uh, your alarms control module. So, you know, unless uh, you have that uh, key fob and you disable your alarm, this relay here is going to keep this signal wire from going any further. And also, obviously, there's, this is just another component that you need to check if you're diagnosing problems uh, with your starting system. Uh, this relay is going to be something that you need to test. Again, I've, made a, I've got a pretty thorough video on how to test relays. I'll put a link to it right here on the side of the screen if you want to check it out. And also put a link in the description box. It's very important that you learn how to test relays properly because not only you'll be able to, beyond a reasonable doubt, uh, cross that a bad relay off your checklist, you also understand where each wire goes and you'll be, you, have a, you have an easier time finding the different wires that you need to find and test. And after this relay, the 12 volt goes to your neutral safety switch if you have an automatic transmission or to your uh, clutch pedal position switch if you have a manual transmission. Now these two switches basically do the same thing. In the case of your neutral safety switch, the signal can only pass this switch if the car is in park or neutral. If you have an automatic transmission, obviously, in the case of the clutch pedal position, sir, the signal is only going to pass if you have the clutch uh, pressed down. And then if these two switches are working properly, the signal is going to go past these and go to your uh, star relay, which is usually inside your engine bay fuse box. And this is going to be where you get the, the control circuit inside your relay gets its power from. And on the setup we have here, this uh, control circuit has also a constant ground. But on the newer cars, I'm not just going to take an educated guess and say this ground could also be controlled by your uh, ECU as an anti extra anti-theft uh, measure. 
And obviously once this control circuit becomes energized, it activates the switch side of this uh, solder relay and that's when you get 12 volts going from the trigger wire to the trigger post on your uh, starter motor and uh, solenoid assembly, activating your starter, your starter turns your engine, as your turn engine turns, the, your crankshaft position sensor produces a signal to your ECU that your engine is turning and then your ECU starts timing your, uh, your ignition, the spark for your spark plugs and the uh, fuel injectors and that's how you get your car going. And now that we know how this works, here's a couple of tips and setups that you can use to narrow down your problem if you're having starting problems with a setup like this. So what you want to do is to make sure your key is not in the ignition and remove it if it is and then look at your starter relay and remove it. Next we need to figure out which one of these pins has the 12 volt that comes from our battery that goes to the trigger post of our starter assembly. And this is the pin I'm talking about on the graph. This is the pin that has a 12 volt from the battery that comes to the switch side of the starter relay. And as most of you have probably put this together by now, all we have to do is just to jump this connection and get this 12 volt to go to the, to the corresponding pin uh, for the signal wire. And that 12 volt is going to go to our starter. And since our starter always has constant 12 volts from our battery and is always grounded to our engine, then if everything works, if your battery is good, if these wires are good, if your starter is good, then your starter should work and start cranking your engine. And again, since your key is not in the ignition or it's in, not in the on position, you're not, uh, your engine is not going to start, it should only crank. All right, so on this setup, there's only one of these that should have 12 volts uh, when the key is not in the ignition. And I'm going to find this, uh, this one with uh, my test light. I'm just going to ground it to my battery and then I'm going to touch these different ones until I get 12 volts. But you can do this with your multimeter as well. There we go. We got 12 volts here. Now, before we go any further, I think I need to warn people out there that are going to be trying to do this for the first time. You need to know exactly where the 12 volt uh, is supposed to be on the junction side of this and then where you need to jump it to. If you jump the two wrong pins here, you run the risk of damaging your wiring harness and then you'll be in a a lot more trouble than you started with. Uh, also again, if you watch that video on how to test relays, again, I'll put a link to it right here on the side of the screen. You'll learn to test this relay, which is gonna be a part of this uh, diagnostic procedure for a no crank, no start. And you'll also learn uh, what each pin does and where you should have 12 volts and where you need to jump it to on the junction side as well. All right, so after watching that video, I figured out that I need to jump this uh, 12 volt that I've got on this side to this side and this is where it goes to the trigger post on our starter. Another very important warning and, and that is to make sure that your car is in park uh, if it's an automatic or even more important it's in neutral if you have a manual transmission and that your uh, emergency parking brakes are engaged. And again I cannot reiterate how important it is to make sure that your car is in, uh, not in gear especially if you have a manual transmission because if it's in gear and then you jump these two uh, pins here and you're your starter works properly, your battery is good, everything is work. This car is going to start and it's going to crank and then if it's in gear, your car is going to just uh, start moving and then you run the risk of uh, hurting yourself or someone else and that's not going to be good. Alright, next we're going to jump these two pins. Alright, great. So if you were diagnosing this car for a no crank, no start problem, we just verified that everything on this side works properly. We got a good battery, all the connections are good. We got good ground with the start to the engine. And since we already uh, tested our starter relay, you know, this relay is good as well. So the problem has to be on this side. And obviously if you can't get our car to crank uh, when we have a setup like this, then the problem is more than likely on this side. All right, you know what? This video is actually getting a bit long. So I'm actually gonna split this uh, into two videos. And in the second video, I'll include all the different testing procedures. Uh, for all the different components on this side and this side as well and I'll put a link to it right here on this side of the screen along with some other videos that you may find interesting so if you found this video useful please give it a thumbs up subscribe if you want to see more like it and I'll see you next time thanks for watching